let's get into, to, we'll talk about the characters first of all. And James, so one thing I found really interesting about that is that you didn't actually have much to say, really. And yet still, you were so menacing all the way through on such a small amount of dialogue. How do you manage that? Um, what, uh, what is it? I mean, the hair, hair style. Oh, the hair, yeah. <laughs> did you like the hair? There was, lo- I noticed there was lots of playing with the hair. There was the rope. I did enjoy the hair. Yeah, did yeah. You? Well, the hair, the hair was Sally's. I mean, from uh, for a long time, she had this idea that he wanted to. She wanted him to look like a kind of Christ figure, um, with the kind of scar on the head and the long hair, and um, it sort of n- nods subtly. It's not kind of a, a big explicit story point, but I think it sort of nods to him find changing seven years have passed and he's been meditating on well two things the love he has for his son and the hate he feels for Catherine so his life's quite quite simple quite binary but um yeah the hair was fun I had hair extensions down to here it's weird when you have long hair for a short amount of time it's very you weirdly very quickly pick up these ticks you'll sort of get out of the shower and start doing it <laughs> <laughs> and like getting all I loved it I really enjoyed it you, you seem to really there was the bit in the prison cell where you turned it into a little pillow for your head which yeah, is yeah, very, yeah 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 no, very long hair thing to do um what is it when you've been away because obviously a one thing we will talk about is the fact that there's been such a big gap between series two and series three and that was always the plan but when you've been away and you've acted so many different, very diverse roles. What's it like stepping back into a character that you you haven't been with for six, seven years? I mean, it, it was, well, it's, it was a unique experience because, you, you know, if you do have repeated series, usually it's a year, two max between. So that was unique. Um, we, were, we were talking on a press thing recently. It was seven years didn't feel very long when you see everyone in, on set. You know, Siobhan and I had this big hug and saw Jess. And well, I mean, it felt like seven years was nothing. And then suddenly this huge gangly <laughs> brute w- wanders in who's reeks obviously <laughs> and you go oh no seven years has passed and it's a long chunk because this man has transformed but um as far as the kind of creative side of it it's i mean it just it makes the whole thing richer and and gives you this wonderful period where you're trying to fill in the gaps and you're and because sally's written such extraordinarily rich and textured characters um, they kind of lived in those seven years on their own, you know, they kind of fermented and grew on their own. And so when we came back to them, like old friends, you know, their, their lives had moved on. I mean, Tommy's was, as I say, particularly small. He had a very quiet, very specific seven years focusing on these two very kind of clear things. But um, for everyone else, I think you, you guys loved the break, didn't you? I mean, it was sort of, well, time off work, but also time <laughs> to let the, the characters grow. And they did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was lovely. And you mentioned uh, you mentioned Ryan, played by Reese Connor. And yeah. and one thing that Sally said she'd always hoped is that when he grew up that he could still act. That was where <laughs> a lot, a lot actually and he can. Well, he, he really, really can. can. Yeah, yeah, he really can. I mean a lot, yeah. a lot, a lot was riding on that, wasn't it? Yeah. He's got a little less energy than he had when he was <laughs> really? nine. Yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, no, he's great. No, he's great. And one thing, and we talked about people laughing in the right places, and, and one thing when you watch it, and, and those moments where the yoga scene, for example, yeah. where, I mean, where people are laughing well, out loud. It's a fart, fart gag. <laughs> exactly. You can never They're go wrong with a fart gag. Laugh, you can never yeah. go wrong with a fart <laughs> gag. But the fact that the laughs, the moments like that, and, and the relationship between Catherine and Claire, I, I think you, you get a, a different window into Catherine through that relationship. Well, it is, it is like... It's like coming home, those scenes. And I think having had a break from it, like James was just saying, having had a break for that length of time, those scenes with me and Sarah, it does feel like it's familiar and it's like, oh, we're back at home doing the cups of tea, chats, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. No, they're fun. Yeah, they're nice moments. And, mm. and the laughs go right next to moments of absolute drama a menace as well, where at some point you, you're laughing out loud and then suddenly it just it just flicks. Like that. And that's a really clever thing to do, actually, isn't it, in the in the writing? I don't think as many yeah. people could get away with that. No, she's really good at it, isn't she? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is. It's just there. It's written down for us, so... She has a signature which she, she like, I always say she kind of builds you into this false sense of security where she plays on tropes, which we're used to, the villain, the, you know, the hero, whatever it might be, and then uh, at some random point, she'll rip the rug out and you're suddenly left completely con- discombobulated because you, what you thought the character was is completely... I love, I love that. It's sort of a Sally signature. 
you never quite know what's you know your, your, all the stuff you've built up and all the like judgment you've made is 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 very very um, finite and, yeah. and and it's real as well, isn't it? In, in moments like that, people laugh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, they they kind of get the giggles about something or yeah. So so Will and Jessica, because a lot of what you do is actually taking the script, the written word that's come from Sally's mind and then turning it into what we see. So when you get it, because most of us have never seen a, a written page that, that a, a producer or a director or an actor might get. So how much of that is is on the page? How much of it is direction? How much of it is just words? How do you turn that into this? A lot of it's on the page. Yeah. Sally's scripts are really detailed, mm. really intense. When you read the stage directions, every little detail is there. So it's our job to try and transcend that onto the screen and make sure that every detail is covered. She, and she's amazing on the detail, literally down to what somebody is wearing, how they would make the tea, what they would do. Um, and it's really important that we make sure that detail is there. It is, yeah. And because it's Sally, so if you read a script like that by some writers, you go, oh, right. But because it's Sally, every single little nugget is just worth its weight in gold. And they're funny. The stage directions mm, are kind of yeah, like a detail in themselves that are a joy to read. Yeah. You know, she she writes the direction as you would speak. You have little bits like, oh, you know, she'll be like, I drop, she dropped the tea towel for fuck's sake. You know, she'll kind of write this sort of <laughs> lovely, yeah. um, g gentle chat with you. And also I noticed between the first and the second series, her writing changed because she directed an episode in the first yeah. episode four, and then she directed four of episode, of series two, and she started writing more like and a more, director. Yeah. yeah, she used to write stuff like now we're panning right and we're having a big wide and we're kind of cutting, you know, jumping in. Mm. She started her control of the whole thing even got, got great in a lovely way, you know. Does does that help you too when you're to, to have that level of direction from the writer actually? Because often those two things are split apart, aren't they? Is it is it more intense to know that you are all of that has come I'm a from bit the mind shit of one with person? Stage direction. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah, bit freestyle. I tend to ignore them. Right. But um <laughs> because I think sometimes that can inform and you you don't necessarily want to be playing what that's informing, but um yeah, I suppose I mean the Sally stuff is Sally writes the way I think she writes the way people speak. Mm. And that's not that easy to do. Mm. So um, when you get her scripts, you are kind of desperate to get to work and get on with it because yeah. it's it's that good. And you trust it. You trust it. <laughs> yeah, so. you do trust it. Yeah. And as well with something, sorry to interrupt, no, no. but like as it, with In Happy Valley, because she knows the performance so well of our characters, mm. so as we've come back to this third series when she's writing it, as you read it, you can imagine Siobhan portraying Claire and exactly how she'll do that. And so because Sally has the idea of how they'll all do it, mm. that then is on the page, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it, she's picking up their mannerisms. And yeah, because you must have an ownership of the characters as well. Yeah. After, after so long, you must... I mean, are there ever moments where there's a discussion where you think, actually, no, I, I don't think they would do it like this. I think they would do it like that. She, it's more that she's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was going to say no. I'd like to do everything. Well, you say no, I'll say no. Okay, right. Um, we, I mean, I, she, I feel like inevitably the more empowered, the, you know, the more you've done it and the more you know the people you're collaborating with, you feel empowered to contribute and everything else. But I feel like Sally has a great, I mean, she's really good at allowing you a lot of guidance, which you trust through stage directions and through language. And sometimes with scripts, you do sort of adapt and improvise around the words. But with Sally's, there's such a specific rhythm that you do keep to it. But then also there's there's this other side where she does sort of set you free and she, and now I think she, you know sadly this is the last but she definitely trusts us and so for example in that first episode she she was like I'd love to find some moments if we can where Tommy is back being a little boy again just if you can if you could find us some wherever it might be just a little kind of playful stupid you know thing and, and so we found that thing with the paper cups yeah. yeah yeah and and stuff like that and they're sitting next to the lawyer too close and you know being a kind of annoying obnoxious little teenager so she she doesn't prescribe everything and she trusts us to you know find stuff and at the same time gives us enough guidance to feel very very looked after so it's a kind of it's it's a very very lovely experience mm. and she does have a great respect for all this cast as well so sometimes if there's something she's not sure about and you query, question something, she'll say, oh, ask Siobhan what she thinks, she'll yeah, it's know. Open for oh, discussion Sarah will know, too. and it's yeah, open yeah. for discussion yeah. because they yeah. know their characters so yeah. well. Definitely. I mean, 
a series like this returning, the actors are in conversation very early about the characters and the way that things move forward. Sarah, who's an executive producer on this series, has a very big voice, actually, in how we conclude Catherine's story, and so she should. Um, it's sort of, it's to be worked out together. And Sally, as singular as she is, as a writer and as a director, is also a massive collaborator. Um, I don't know anybody who leans on research relationships, um, the two police advisors, for example, that we have on this series, um, in quite the same way as Sally. She's incredibly meticulous, uh, trusting, and interested in authentically representing what it's like. So, yeah, yeah Lisa. Lisa the cop, she has more power than Sally. I mean, so <laughs> many times we're like, oh, yeah. no, Lisa needs Can't to be do it like consulted yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. She Let's is. pick up on something that actually James and Will, you've both mentioned in that last answer about the fact that this, this is the end. It's definitely the end. No series four. It was always designed to be... A, <laughs> you're laughing as if it's... She, I'm laughing because Apparently it's so... it was always designed to be a trilogy. From the start, did you know from the start it was always three? Uh, no. <laughs> Do you know what? She told me, she told me Sarah knew. I think what? I think we knew. We, knew, did, we knew after two. Uh, uh, did we? <laughs> I think I it, was, it was, it was people, touchy. People just kept saying, are you going to do any more? And I, and I only knew to say if Sally wants to write it. Cause, and Sally was then so busy, I'm not sure. I mean, I know she she kind of wanted to, but it was whether or not Maybe it was, it was touching ever going to happen. You were coming back on that. <laughs> Wow. The, wow, reason, right. the reason I was yeah. laughing is because it's so weird for a TV producer to not go, oh yeah, we'll do another series. It's our, bre it's our bread and butter. But Sally and Sarah made this really conscious decision, possibly at the end of series two, um, that, it, that it would only return once more after a seven year gap. And the two vital things, as, as you've seen, are that Reese is now at an age, Ryan is now at an age to make his own decisions about his life and the relationships in it. And Catherine's on the brink of retirement. And those felt like such juicy things to explore. In the police, you have to retire at a very specific age. So it was really prescribed that it would return after this gap. It definitely isn't coming back. And again, this is Sally and Sarah completely rightly feel that you, know, you can't have too much of a good thing. I think Sarah needed a big rest after series two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think she, she needed a big sleep. Yeah. And that's all she's That been was doing. a lot going it on. It is quite intense though, isn't it? I mean, it must be for you, you know, it is to watch, so it must be to act. Yeah. I, I can't speak for, I, I am going to speak for Sarah. It's, it's, but my job is not like her job in it. Mm. <laughs> Sarah's got the intensity and the, She's on set. Yeah, every all the day, time. From it, it, morning to night, learning page after page after page of dialogue. So mm -hmm. um, I kind of pop up every now and again in a double knitwear combo. <laughs> I, I must say, I think you're being feeling quite it. feeling the odd carrot and having a bit of fun. So <laughs> doing the odd fart gag. So we're all right. We're all right. So, you are being very modest. Um, there's much more to come of Claire in this series than carrots and fart gags. It is intense yeah. because, because you know the stakes. You know, you know the, the expect the wonderful pressure which this time round we had because you know the first two series were so well received and loved, and so you don't. I mean, not that you phone in other work, but this one you really particularly. You know, come <laughs> can't phone it in. Yeah, you can't, you can't phone, phone it in. in. And you, no, and you can't phone it's, in. it's sort of sacred, you know. You really, you, you know that the, the, the I, I loved, I, we loved the expectation and the pressure. Also, because every time you get the script, you're like, yes, yeah, she's done it again. You know, yes, she's that's not, a great she's not too. fallen short. Yeah, not she. She never would. But like, there's always that thing: is this going to be as good as the first two? And I mean, it, it it's, I think it's better. Mm. It's, it just yeah. gets better and better. Mm. And to have that anticipation for it as well. And, and the people who've come here tonight, who've been desperate. I mean, how long have you been waiting to see this third series? I know. And, and I've, I've done Q&A sessions like this with for the different <laughs> things that Sally's made in the meantime, uh, for To Walk Invisible and Gentleman Jack. And when you throw the questions open, there's always somebody who says, when's Happy Valley coming back? Always. Because it, it, kind of, it has a, a special place for people. People connect to it in a way that they don't always with, with TV drama, do they, Will? No, it's, it's true. It's a really rare alchemy. You're so lucky if you ever get to be involved with a show that has this level of connection um, with so many people. But Sally just has this ear for human voices and human experience. Um, 
and then wonderful actors step into it, um, or in this case, step back towards it, um, and make it what it is. It, it, and you, you just don't know which shows it's going to happen for. Um, but of course, the gift of picking this up as a final series, knowing who was coming back to it, um, we knew we had a pretty good chance. I'm going to attempt to ask a no spoilers question. Sally said, and we, we talked about whether or not it come back. She said that the end, and I haven't, I've only seen what you've seen. She said it has a very definite ending. Yes or no, does it have a very definite ending? No, no, I don't think it does actually. Oh, now, now. No, it doesn't, does it? What? Well, then there's some debate. I mean, whatever we say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no. The yes or no is, yes or no is supposed to be the easy ones. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, that was. I'm just because you see. Yeah, I know. I know. I should. You I should. No, you don't want to know. Well, well, no, this is it. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. No, no. but we. We're, no, we we're, don't. We we're don't. really not doing any more. <laughs> like it's, sad. it's not a trick from from Sally. We're what not going to announce the series. You hear that from everybody. You, you get '80s pop stars coming back to do the rounds again, and you go, we just had another Top Gun this year. You know, when it's something that's so popular, can you ever, can you really say no more? Well, when you put it like that, I can't. But yeah. ah, <laughs> ah, there we are. I Look. really don't anticipate that we'll be doing any more. And um, I mean, you're a few weeks away from the ending, sadly. But when you get to it, I really hope you'll feel content that if that's the last you ever see of the characters of Happy Valley, it was a big way to go out. Of all the different things that, that, that you've done over the years, both of you that you've acted in, um, do you find that, that that shows you're in have the same level of love and affection from the viewers? There must be a, a sliding scale. It mustn't all be like this. Or are they? I wouldn't know. No, this, uh, this is a really special one. And people, mm, people, when they talk to me over the past few years, I'm saying, please, are you gonna, do you know if you're going to do another one? They talk about, they talk about Catherine and Claire's relationship but um, in a big way, <laughs> it's it's not the sort of thing that they kind of go, oh, I really love that show. Mm -hmm. It's really, they want to talk to me about it and about that relationship and what's happened and what could happen. So in that respect, it's, it's not like anything else I've ever done before. Yeah, no, I mean, I, the love, it goes deep um, ac across the world as well. It's amazing how many people it touches in other countries. Most of them watch it with subtitles on as well, which is kind of bizarre. In America, they don't understand what we're saying, but they stick with it. <laughs> um, but they love it. And I think it's the, as Siobhan said, it's the family, it's the blood. It's, you know, every, all of our characters are linked. You know, Tommy, his son, his, the, 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 the grandmother of his, you know, the mother of his, it's all kind of linked and it's, and it's, it's the cups of tea over the kitchen table which make it so universal but um yeah i mean for me personally it it, it changed everything because it, it it was it was the t you know siobhan had, she only does big water cooler shows you know like downton and whatever whereas for me it was kind of the first first time i'd been part of that kind of conversation where everyone you know lots of people in the country were all talking about the same show and it was not you know, so much content now that very few of those shows really that, that happens and so um it was a massive deal for me personally. I, you know, it allowed me to sort of play something completely different, and and still, you know, people refer to it, and, and it should shows that you can do the versatility. So for me, I owe it everything. I love it, and I owe, I owe Sally and these guys. I mean, Jess was you were makeup on the first series, yes. and now she's produced. Now she's yes. doing yeah. that because you. Yeah. Yeah. A, just a completely different routine. Yeah. It's like with so many, so many jobs and so many industries, there's that standard route that people take. And this was your producing debut mm -hmm. this time round. And you know, start don't pick, with don't, something don't small. Don't pick something small. <laughs> will you? Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't no pick, pressure whatsoever. <laughs> don't pick and, something. And, and by the way, she is amazing. Yeah, I mean, amazing. it is a killer show to produce because you're in North Yorkshire. It's snowing. The weather is horrible. You know, the budget isn't. You know, it's it's one of the TV show in the UK. This is, Jess was a you know magical producer. Nice thing I've ever said Thanks, to you. James. Um, just, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I said? I, I will admit, I said to to Jessica before we came out tonight. I said. Can you tell me exactly what a producer does? 
And you you said basically I ask that every day. Do you really? <laughs> On oh. most jobs. And the answer was kind of everything. It <laughs> oh, yeah, seems they do. Just everything. to facilitate the whole vision, really. Yeah, that's and make sure bit, that they're happy, the execs are happy. Well, that the whole machine is turning every day and that we hit the targets and meet the schedule. And So how did you swap into that from... Uh, I'd worked with Sally quite a lot on previous things a few on things last of tango. last tango yeah. happy valley to walk invisible done quite a lot of work with her and a lot of work with sarah and they both kind of said we think you've got the right ingredients and knowledge to do you fancy having a go at producing did they tell you at that point that one day you would have to sit in front of an audience of 400 no. people <laughs> <laughs> and tell just them only, all about it did they not mention found that out this morning. i only found that out this um, morning <laughs> I think, you know, neither Sally nor Sarah has a particularly low bar for collaborators. Um, and so you really take it seriously when both come and say, it's got to be this person. Um, and it really had to be this person for this series. It's a very, very tight knit group of people who worked together on those first two series. And I wasn't one of them, but Jess was right in the middle of it. And um, yeah, we were incredibly lucky. I mean, let's just say like the, the Sally signature I, I mentioned earlier, the, the rug pull, I think there's a few of those still to come. So you'll, you'll, I think, as Will said, you won't, I think she, she keeps giving you more than what you think you're even, you know, it's just, it just gets bigger and bigger and more, more expansive and, and it's surprising right until the end. It's just surprising. So, yeah. um, and it's for us as well, because, you know, you're, you're not, um, you think, you know, the character and then suddenly there's this whole other potential route they can take and that's the beauty of Sally's writing. Actually it's quite a brave thing to do isn't it as a as a writer because sometimes the things the rug pull moments are not necessarily what people want. It's huge I mean for me Tommy was a psychopath and then episode five of, of five of series one after that horrible scene in the cellar where he's beaten Catherine up he's in he's in a tower block crying with a beer can over why he ruined his life and he, you know, he, he didn't mean to be such a horrible, you know I mean? It's just suddenly you're like, oh, and then so many people ask me, why, why do we feel sympathy for Tommy? He's a monster, raping, murdering psychopath. And yet I kind of feel this weird sympathy and that is Sally to a T. She just whoosh, twists it beautifully. Siobhan, do you want to go at the, uh, at the, at the no spoilers oh, question? I just have to say, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Not even just a sound. Mm, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. I think Sally finds it really irritating sometimes, a perception of Halifax as a cultural backwater, and that this sequence of series that she's made over the last sort of 10 to 15 years has been about really, really correcting that uh, in a big way. Has she had some success? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, I also think, like, I remember the first series when we, when we got up there and Get into, get into a cab on the way from the station. They'd be like, oh, what are you doing? We're doing a series. Oh, what's it about? Oh, it's about... And then you kind of... You don't want to sort of denigrate the area and, and you know, as you say, portray it in this negative light. And, and there was conversations around... You know, she gave us this amazing documentary. It was a White Poor Tears Without Gloves. Have you ever seen that documentary? Beautiful doc. She gave it all to the, all the cast. And it's about um, a, a sort of lost... It's about drug abuse and and poverty, but I don't think the show. I mean, people who watch the show who have no idea about this area, they lo they go away loving the area. They people in America, they they ask about the area, and and I think it's it is a show about the state of the nation. You know, there are there are very elegant kind of comments on this community who were you know decimated when all those mills closed, and they were forgotten, and they are still forgotten, and the government continue to like this north south divide is obviously a massive problem so um she's very elegant and deft in commenting on that but never i don't i don't think she she never wants to sort of portray it in one light she loves it mm. just lives there we i grew up nearby and i think most people who watch it fall in love with the area as well so it's yeah. sally's yeah. main aim within the series and pretty much every series she does is that the, the backdrop and the hillage, mm. as she calls it. <laughs> yeah. Sally likes to make sure that as we're filming and she'll look at locations as we're scouting locations, that will always be her question. Is there hillage in the background? Can we see down to Thornton? Mm. Can we see this? Can we see where Emily Bronte used to walk? You know, she's got references to everything and it's really important <laughs> that we include that and get that onto the screen. Totally. Yeah. That amazing um, history, Sally always says, when you're in Halifax, look up. Um, because mm. all of the architecture of those old buildings that were part of this kind of thriving industrial town, it's all still there um, if you'll just look up. 
Yeah. Before we take another question as well, actually on that point, when when you are filming, and, and as we saw there, you know, the locations, they're real life locations, they're, they're schools, they're, they're, you know, cafes, all of these, these places that exist, and we know half of them. How do you, how do you film when there are so many interested people around who maybe want to just come and stare and get involved and, and be in the background? You know, how, logistically, how do you, how do you manage to, to do that when you're not filming it all on a, on a back lot somewhere? We kind of have security around and people, that, and most people are just really fascinated by it really excited that we're there so there's never really many people that would cause trouble they just want to i was was, was thinking less of trouble and more that people would just like the crowds yeah exactly they would just be there standing it's so bloody cold up there (laughs) you'll know this yeah (laughs) that they might come for a few minutes and then (laughs) and then they'll bugger off because it's too cold i did notice the opening scenes wreathed in mist on the tops and i thought yeah Yeah. that's that's a standard standard day oh that fog we never thought we'd be able to use that shot really um because it was so (laughs) foggy and dark but it's come out perfect um we would never you obviously could never have created that weather and visual effects and we just got it but yeah you don't want to be standing around in that for too long no. anyone who's been on a film set knows it's so boring <laughs> <laughs> eventually people just get fed up and drift i think when i read the very first opening scene of the first series i knew it was really special but you're never quite sure when you're filming, if it's going to come across to the audience as well as you as you just as well as you think it's going, because <laughs> you can think, oh, this is great, and actually it can be a complete dud when it hits the screen, or the audience <laughs> just don't get what 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 you've been doing. But oh, um, that must be a killer. Has that happened? I mean, not not yeah. with this, but you've you've, you've known that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you pour all yeah. your, your your love and your heart and soul into it, and people go. Meh. Well, you just never know, do you? you just never really and know. That I think the, the audience's fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think with this, I think, yeah, I think when we when we finished the first series, I thought, oh, this is it's going to be a real goodie. And then once it hit the screens, just the the feedback from people, just just the love for it, the real love for it. The, 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 um, the international thing took a little bit longer. It definitely filtered down. It's definitely got a kind of cult status in America, and that took a couple of series to sort of reach because it wasn't didn't have the kind of AMC, who are the distribution the channel in the US, didn't have that kind of backing, so it kind of took a bit longer. But I remember, you, Jess, you might remember this, the scene when in the first series when I'm follow, when I Tommy follows Ryan out of the school and Catherine grabs him by, you know, says, you know, and he knocks on the window and says, you're my son. Um, Karen Lewis, the second best producer I've ever worked with, who was <laughs> who produced the first series, she I remember that day because she got an email from may, it may have been Charlotte Moore or someone at the BBC it was. saying yeah. No, before Charlotte. Was it before Charlotte? Yeah. Um it was someone at a very, very senior level in the BBC and they'd watched the rushes and we got a really great email and she read it to us and it was like, just so you guys know, this is the most special thing we've got on our slate right now. Mm. Keep making the magic. It's incredible. And I remember this like rush of adrenaline went through the crew because and the cast because we're like, oh, it's confirmed that we have something really special here. Oh, when you get that that first bit of oh, outside great. feedback. It was quite cinematic. She stood on the top of a camera truck. And we were, oh, really? Yeah, yes. Right. <laughs> so a moment. Yeah. Actually, following on from that, um, what is it like to watch yourself? And and there's 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 lots of the cast here as well. What's it like to watch yourself in a room full of because like normally you watch it at home or something, but to watch it in a room full of people and to hear them laughing and gasping and reacting. What what's that like? Great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> I mean, I mean it, uh, I've seen it before. <laughs> It's, so um, otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Really? <laughs> yeah. Would it just have been too uh, awful, too nail biting? Yeah. yeah. So it is it amazing. Nice. I'd seen it before, so. Yeah. It is amazing for us. Yeah. We've watched this episode many, many, many times. How many times, times have oh, you watched it? Hundreds. Could you? Yeah. Could you watch all the words? <laughs> we yeah, 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 yeah. We know Let's all the words. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it gets to be a bit of a slog in post production because you're basically just kind of looking for the last couple of things that aren't quite right to fix them before before you will get to watch it. So to hear people laugh is such it's a relief. Brilliant. To hear people gasp at the end, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, I was so excited. Um, it. 
Oh yeah, I mean it has <laughs> happened. Weird. It happened more. I've said this in a couple of interviews. It happened in the first series. Uh, uh, a lady came up to me in my local area and and totally randomly grabbed me by my shirt and like shook me and said, "You're a monster." You're a monster. <laughs> and then sort of woke up and sort of went, "Oh God, I don't know you," and I'm so sorry and like straightened me out. So that happened, and then a, a, I remember someone at a festival. I was dancing to a band, and I turned around, and I think she'd had you know a couple of drinks, and she just yelped, screamed as I turned and looked at her, because she just was confronted with Tommy Rice. So yeah, it does happen. <laughs>
Are we? Are I we? Can't. Are our characters? Are, I, I feel like you, we, you and I, sit at two ends of an extreme where you see the the best in everyone, and I see yeah. the worst in everyone. Like, Tommy thinks the world is out to kill him, and he has to f- hit first before it'll hit him. Whereas you, yeah, Claire see, would Claire would always try and see the best in anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, sorry, I'm, that was a bit. Hope my answer's a bit. Crap. No, it's fine. <laughs> Honestly, you're amazing. I actually, I actually don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but yeah, that was, was a really the last last good question. Bit. She, asked bit she did ask another what bit. Was what was the last bit? bit of the the last bit was. I might not um, be able to answer that as well, but let's just see. Let's just see what you said. The last bit was if you could say anything to her, if she was a real person, what would you say? Um. <laughs> no. I'd say you're a really great sister, <laughs> and um. And uh, yeah, stay, yeah, stay on the wagon. Stay on the wagon. Yeah. Stay on the wagon. Yeah. 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 Can, I, can I just say, just to like round up, like, it's amazing to be part of a show which is so loved and people to come back after seven years. And is, I mean, you've, you've touched on this, but there is no experience like it being part of a show um, like Had Valley. And it's all because of people who love it so much and like, galvanize it and you're the, you're the force behind it so so thanks for turning up mm. after seven years oh, thank, thank you, you.